this could go spectacularly badly. This is the ScanSat Radar Altimeter. Oh, I just so love having patched conics and maneuver nodes. Okay, uh, so anything's happening? <laughs> Hello, my name is Mike Aben and welcome to my KSP campaign. This is the Moonar 2, which we put onto the surface of the moon last episode. And I'm looking to do a little bit of a hop to one of these nearby craters. I'm hoping that these are middling craters here. I think I'm going to go for the one to the east of us. We have just over 900 meters per second of delta V, so we certainly should be able to pull this off. And I'm hoping to get into another biome for some more science. Now to help us out, I am going to get into Kerbal Engineer. We're going to edit, 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 edit. Let's edit HUD number two. Let's put in a separator here. And give us some data. Some data. So where is the... Business. Oh, separators are under miscellaneous, I suspect. Separator. So put in a separator. And then what I want to do is do the surface and look at the suicide burn data. That is not what I'm looking for. Maybe it is under Vessel. Suicide Burn Altitude, Suicide Burn Distance. That's the one I find the most useful. Uh, suicide Burn Delta V is useful in the sense that if you don't have enough Delta V, um, if, if, the, if this is more than the amount of Delta V that you have, um, you're going to crash. But the problem is by the time you know that, <laughs> you know, it's sort of uh, a mute point. <laughs> so I'm going to, we'll keep that part as a surprise. Okay, we're going to go due westward. And I guess I got to watch this from this view. Oh, yeah, I'm going to try and aim for this crater here. And I guess we got to watch from here. So, turn this off. This could go spectacularly badly westward which way is that on the map that's down this way to or in the nav ball 270 that way okay um you know what just let's start from here so we are going to throttle upwards okay we're off already going westward try and get a nice trajectory and cut all right. Get ready to do our... Now, is this our crater here? Could be. I think so. I think this is our crater right here. You can watch our biome and see if it changes from Midlands. If it doesn't change, then this was completely... Now, our suicide burn distance is not for a while yet so we're going to be coasting for a bit whether we got we should have the fuel to yeah we should because theoretically the amount i just burned should also be the amount i need to stop at the other end clearly it'll be more than that because i won't be able to just do this perfect like well let's rotate this so blues on top i know i always find easier but we are going to keep track of this Still on our way up, but almost at Apoapsis, so it seems pretty confident we're going to be coming down. This little crater here would be just, I like, right there. What's our situ biome? Still Midlands. That's not encouraging. Not encouraging at all, is it? Still Midlands. Let's push ourselves prograde. A little upward, a little prograde-ish. Let's see if we can not go for, like, this crater. I got a feeling I might be kind of... Let's try and go this way. Southwards, southwards. That's northwards, southwards, southwards, southwards. Try and affect our trajectory a little bit. Okay, back, 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 back. 
I might have just made. Well, I'm not an error because this thing's done its job. This is all extension. This is all gravy. Okay, let's see if that changes our biome. We now have only 529 meters per second left. But if this one, I am going to put it down. Oh god, I'm upside down. Suicide burn distance is still six kilometers. Come on. Stop rolling and get downwards. Yeah, let's, we're going down. Burn. Okay, because, uh, let's do it. This is not a new biome, but we'll just see if we, let's just put her down. Burn. I guess there wasn't a new biome available. That's too bad. So, no new science for you, but I'll put it down anyway. I don't want to just let this thing crash. We don't have the fuel to go anywhere else, so this is going to be the end of this. But while we're putting it down, why don't we talk about what else is coming up in our mission schedule. So, up next, we're going to be launching a mapping satellite scheduled to go into a polar orbit about Kerbin. And we're going to be using the ScanSat mod, so we'll That'll give us an opportunity to talk about that particular mod. It'll be the first time that we're using it. Next on the schedule, well, I had the Minmus 1. The Minmus 1 is on its way, obviously, to Minmus, but then it's going to blow past Minmus and go and orbit the sun. So uh, that's what that mission is. So both missions doing something that we have yet to see in this series. Also, with both those launches, I have done a bit of modifying to my Ascent script. So uh, we'll also talk a little bit about what I've added to that. So a little bit of KOS is also going to creep into this episode. Lots of stuff to talk about. But in the meantime, you can see, well, we are closing in on touchdown here. And boosh, there we are. We are down. Unfortunately, nothing to do. Uh, probably should have targeted somewhere else. These aren't, may, yeah, maybe down here would have been better. Maybe that, well, well. Anyway, I made my choice. I have to live with it. Let's get to our mapping satellite. So this is the Maxwell One, and we'll be launching this and going over the contracts in detail in just a moment. But I made a slight adjustment to my Ascent script that we'll be using very soon here and I just want to show it to you so we're gonna go edit the ascend um, this won't take very long because it's a very small change but I think I'd step in the right direction so what I have done is if we take a look at our main program whoa why did you do that <laughs> if we take a look at our main program here I have added another function down here at the bottom here called auto deploy everything else here is pretty much the same as what you've seen in the past and what I've gone over before so I'm not going to go over it uh, anymore but down at the bottom I have an auto deploy function so let's take a look at it so here are all the functions associated with this program by the way these aren't in any particular order they don't have to be the in the order in which they're called but um, auto deploy does happen to be at the back here because, well, um, it's the last one I made. <laughs> and I'm just noticing, oh, we have some spacing issues. So why don't I get started by fixing these? Something like that. All right, this is pretty good. Okay, let's take a look at it. So what the purpose of this auto deploy is? is is as the comment here says it stages the fairings for me and deploys any deployable equipment and this is the first vessel that I'm going to be using it on so I want to sort of explain how this sort of works so the first thing it's got to decide is whether there is a fairing present because if there's a fairing present we want to stage but not every rocket has a fairing on it and if there isn't a fairing I don't want to stage so what I've got here is a variable called fairing that I've originally set to be false Okay, so this variable is going to be a flag, which is going to tell me whether or not there's a fairing there. We're going to start with the assumption that there's not a fairing there, and then we're going to go look for one. So, next line here says list parts. So list, 
uh, creates a object called a list, which kind of as the name implies is just a list of things. In this case, it's a list of parts. Parts is a key word in KOS, which represents all the parts that are on the vessel. So this is saying, go to the parts that are on the vessel. We're going to make a list of them, and we're going to store this into a variable called part list. So part list will end up holding a list of all the parts that are held on this vessel. And then we're not going to do anything until our altitude gets to our deployment altitude. This is a hard-coded altitude that I have up towards the top of the program. I have it set at 60 kilometers so that this is not going to do anything else. It's going to stop here until it gets to 60 kilometers. Um, and if I want to change that, I can. But 60 kilometers seems like a good altitude in which to do, you know, fairing, staging, and deploying stuff. All right. And next structure, we've got a new structure I haven't talked about yet called a for loop. So a for loop goes through a loop between this curly brace and this curly brace uh, a fix a certain number of times. That's what a for loop do. It's going to repeat these statements a certain number of times. And the number of times depends upon how many parts are in the part list. So basically, I like to read the word each in here. For each part in the part list, we're going to execute these commands. And then when it runs out of parts, we're going to exit the for loop. So we have an if statement. And the if statement is going to take a look at that part, and it's going to get the name of the part. And this is the name that's stored in the config file for that part. So you had to, I had to do a little bit of digging through config files to find out what these names are. And if that name happens to equal fairing size 1, I believe that's the name of the 1.25 meter stock fairing, if I'm not mistaken. If this is a true statement, then we're going to go down to here and it's going to say set the fairing to true. So basically we've just found a fairing and we're going to set the value of this fairing variable now to true. There's a fairing on this thing. However, if it's not fairing size 1, I got the OR keyword, it keeps going, it says okay, well, what if the name is fairing size 2? Or what if the name is fairing size 3? Or And it keeps going down. And I had to sort of look to see all the fairings that I had in the game, including stock ones and ones from DLCs and ones uh, from, um, from mods and things. I think I've got them all. I hope I've got them all. Uh, but they're all listed here. If it's any of these, then it's going to set fairing to be true. Then it exits out, and then once it's through all the parts in the part list, we come out of the for loop. So basically, we've gone through every part now on the vessel. If any of them is one of these names, fairing is now true. If it doesn't encounter any of these, then fairing will still be false from what it was set up above. And then we have an if statement here said if fairing. So basically, that fairing value is either false or true. If it's false, it's going to skip these steps from this curly brace to this curly brace. But if it's true, then it's going to perform these steps. In other words, it has found a fairing. If it has found a fairing, it's going to stage. So I'm assuming I got my staging set up so that the staging will stage the appropriate thing. Hopefully, that's the fairing. It'll print a blank line, and then it'll print staging the fairing just out to the user. Then it's going to wait five seconds. Uh, I put this wait in here because if you try and do deployables at the same time you're staging the fairing, quite often the deployables uh, will think it's still under the fairing and won't deploy. So this is just to give a bit of a pause. So we wait five seconds and then we're going to activate action group 10. So this is action group 10 on. So anything that's attached to action group 10 is going to be activated. So clearly what I need to do here is make sure that all my deployable equipment is always on action group 10. So that's just a standard thing I'm going to have to do with my rockets from now on. So if I want antennas to go or solar panels to go or anything like that, make sure they're on 10. Print a blank line. Then it print a statement extending deployable equipment. Print another blank line. Print attitude lock disengage. This is because it's going to end the program pretty soon. Waits five seconds. Prints a blank line again for clarity. And then the program is going to end. And that's it. OK, so let's save that. And we'll see how this works. So exit. Bring this down. And to put this to the test, we just need to do this. Oh, well, I guess I should talk about what the mission is. So this is a mapping satellite, the mapping equipment coming from a mod called ScanSat. And I actually have two contracts that are more or less the same thing. I think I accidentally installed two different ScanSat contract packs. So I'm 
kind of taking advantage of that now. The first one is to do a low resolution altimetry scan over Kerbin and I got to cover at least 75% of the planet. That's going to take a bit of time. That's simple enough. The next one is very much the same, except I have to come into a very specific orbit. Um, and the orbit says that the apoapsis has to be between, what's that, 493 point yada 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 meters, 493 point something kilometers and 499 point something kilometers. And same with the periapsis. So we gotta get up to around this altitude. Uh, eccentricity needs to be very low, but we have a very, very specific inclination of 83.1 to 83.6. So we're gonna launch into that inclination. So I'm gonna run ascend. We want to go into an incline. Now, I always find this thing comes a smidge short, so I'm going to go with an inclination of 84 degrees. I suspect it'll come a little short of that. Maybe it'll end up in that range. If it doesn't, we can fix it on the way up. And we're going to go just for 80 kilometers for our apoapsis for now. Alrighty, that should do her, so hit miss. Okay, four, three, two, one, and we go. Oh, and I noticed just now that I put in a positive 84 degrees, so we're going to be going towards the north. I've been trying to get myself to head towards the south, but either way is going to work in the end, so it doesn't matter. Oh, well, we'll be dropping some, well, yeah, we'll be dropping some boosters on some houses over here. <laughs> As you can see, it is being lifted on the all too familiar hammer R2 booster, a very, very well used booster for me. The reason why it's such a well used booster is because there's a huge range between payload masses between this one and the next one down, which gets into those striker boosters. So um, that's why so many of these lighter probes, I think any probe up to about, I think in around the six seven hundred kilometer or kilogram range ends up going on this guy unless it's really little all right Boom. <laughs> I should fix that but I just don't care enough nothing else is gonna happen till we get to 60 kilometers so let's time warp up to there and then we'll see how my auto deploy function works okay let's stop here again we should stage the fairing and then five here, just boat. Boom. Nice. And then in five seconds should be all that's gonna happen is an antenna should deploy. There it is. Right there. Communitron eight antenna deployed. And then the program ended. Good. Worked perfectly. Alright. Well, next step is to push our well, we gotta get into orbit. We're not quite into orbit then, but I'm gonna keep burning until my apoapsis is in around. I don't know, 495 we'll call it. Let's call it 495. How do my inclination do? 81.93. So I need to come over about another degree and a half. That's okay. Need to go this way about another degree and a half. More polarish, right? Yes. So we'll, we'll kind of try and get, we'll do get up our apoapsis and try and fix our inclination at the same time. And start pushing up, bringing up our inclination. Nice, a little more thrust watching and you end up watching a lot of things when you're doing this any more thrust I wanna don't want to go past my oh 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 we are in our we went too far with our inclination gotta come back <laughs> there we go we're in our right range okay I'm pro grade oh I'd like to get a pro body that has uh, locked a pro grade in it that would be actually pretty nice And not a little, little lower on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, what are we going for again? About 495. Keep burning. Okay. 
Whoa, 494. Let's give it a little bit of a... Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, that's cool. So our apoapsis is in the green. Our inclination is in the green. Now we just need to get up there and get our periapsis in the green. Okay, that's that. Let's cut the throttle there. And, oh, en en engine is ready to go. Plenty of fuel left to finish this off. More than enough, in fact. <laughs> Could have done this easily. All right, I'm gonna just keep doing this until we're in the green. There we go, all of our orbital parameters are now in the green. So this thing is in the orbit that was required of it. Let's again position it in a nice orientation for exposing those solar panels to the sun. And we will take a look at it. You can see it's not, well, you know, most of my probes aren't that much <laughs> in terms of probes, a little ant engine on the bottom, bit of fuel in that Oscar B fuel can. Other than that, that's that's about the end of it. But of course, the new thing is this. This is the ScanSat radar altimeter. It's low resolution one. There's a later high resolution one. And as soon as that's going, that should be doing its thing. Should I, do I have to? No, nope, it's definitely doing its thing right now. And I think, I think if I'm not mistaken, it should be collecting some data for me too. A low resolution altimetry scan over uh, over Kerbin. So we'll just leave that to do its thing. Yep, I don't think there's anything else to do with that. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the ScanSat mod. This is going to take a little while for it to scan the required percentage of the planet. Doesn't happen instantaneously like in the stock game. I know the stock has its own. Let's turn this. There we go has its own mapping stuff, but I really do like this one so much better. I think I missed the button. There it is. So what it's doing is it's generating this map right now. Everything is gray except for this little zone right below our satellite. We can zoom in there a little bit. You can see it's fairly heavily pixelated because this is a low resolution scan, but as the satellite moves along here, we can do a little time warping and watch it as the satellite moves along in its orbit. It'll keep filling in. Should get another chunk of it pretty soon. Oh, do I need to stop time warping it for it to get a little chunk, a little more? Feels like there should be another chunk coming up. <laughs> It is going, right? Maybe the time warping messes it up. All right, you know what? Maybe the best plan is just to leave it to do its thing. And uh, yeah, and then you can access this map from other places than being out here as well. So that's, that's really kind of neat. And I think a lot more useful than the standard one that you get with the stock game. But anyway, let's get ourselves back to the space plane hangar. Space plane hangar. Where'd that come from? The space center. And oh, Min Miss One. Min Miss One is up next. All right, that's awesome. Uh, I I know actually, if you recall from last episode, the seaplane was actually really close to being done, but I ended up, if you recall, it needed some testing, and so I did some testing and I made some slight modifications. It's going to take a couple days for those modifications to take effect, unfortunately. But I got to wait on a pilot anyway. Oh, Val's going to be done in 23 minutes, so Val will be ready to fly when that seaplane is ready to go. So that's good. All right, uh, let's then warp to Minmus 1. All right, oh, this looks familiar. <laughs> but I do assure you there is a different probe in there. So this is the Minmus 1. Let's take a look at the Minmus 1 contract. Right, oh wait, this guy, oh no, it's still got to do those contracts, so I shouldn't delete that. There we go. So Mimis 1 has one contract. Contract is to uh, get to Minmus, be in low space, transmit any kind of science that you might have. But then we need to pass Minmus, and we need to be in high space, 
Oh, the sun. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to pass Minmus. Uh, get in to orbit about the sun and be in high space about the sun. And again, recover or transmit any data that we have. So basically, we're going to do a Minmus flyby. Uh, and in order to get this to kick itself out towards the sun, we need to go around Minmus in a prograde direction. So I was hoping that actually the um, tracking station was going to be ready by now. I remember thinking about that because I don't have any kind of... Oh, the tracking station is only three hours away. It kind of makes sense for me to wait for that because as soon as I get the tracking station, I get patch conics and maneuver nodes. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to wait. So <laughs> Let's get back out to the Space Center so we can actually watch this. I always like watching the buildings upgrade. Bah, there we go. I love the tracking station, the tier two tracking station with all these yellow panels on it. I think it, I think it just looks awesome like that. Anyway, that does a lot for me. That improves also the uh, deep space network, the communication network by quite a lot. Uh, let's see, what do we got coming up next? The seaplane's coming up in a day, so I think I will warp to sunrise. Yeah, this rocket's spending a bit of time here on the pad. We've already gone to the moon a couple of times. But now we're going to Minmus, and Minmus, unlike the moon, has run ascend. Oh my gosh, can't talk and type at the same time. Minmus, unlike the moon, is inclined. It, 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 the orbit is inclined at an angle of six degrees. So we're going to launch ourselves into a six degree orbit, um, inclined orbit, so that our orbit will match Minmus's, and this will make it cheaper for us to get out to Minmus. We won't need to do much of a, or shouldn't if everything goes well, uh, we shouldn't have to do much of a mid-course correction on the way there. Now in order for this to happen, here's Minmus, I should be able to select it as a target now. Yay for new tracking station! So we're going to come out to here and the moon is a nice indication of an inclination of zero. So you can see as we look at it from here how Minmus is inclined. But what we want to do, actually we might be very close to being in the right spot right now. Let's just check this out. Here is us. Oh my golly. Wow, what you want... Here, let's uh, turn off all the other distracting information. What you want is to launch at either the ascending or the descending, the equatorial ascending or the descending nodes. And you can find those by making sure you've got Kerbin selected, looking at the moon's orbit, looking at Minmus's orbit, or turning your camera so that they're all edge on. So we do want to launch right now. We are at the equatorial ascending node and we're going to launch towards the north. So that is going to be, wow, we got this just perfectly, uh, six degrees towards the north, so positive six. And we're going to go into my standard 80 kilometer orbit. So we're hitting that. And off we go. And oh my gosh, this thing is looking familiar, is it not? Let's do something exciting and lock the camera on. <laughs> I know people, you must be looking at this going, every one of your launches is the same vehicle. No, it's just the booster that's the same. I just switch out the payloads. There we go. And five more seconds. And there go our antennas. And this time I got two of them, two Communitron 16s, because this thing is going further than any probe has gone before. Um, in fact, you've probably been seeing some of the warnings that are coming up with Munar 1, which got kicked into a very high orbit around Kerbin. It's it's it kind of its communication flakes out now and again. It's just and it's just a little bit past the moon. Now I do have a tier two DSN, so that's gonna help with uh, the upgraded tracking station. All right, I'm happy with that. Still 363 meters per second left in that upper stage of the booster, so that'll let us get out there 
That'll give us a little bit of our kick towards Mimimus. So let's start thinking about getting to Mimimus. So you can see now my blue orbit incline and matching up with Mimimus's orbit. That's what you want to see. So now I can pick the appropriate place on that orbit and it shouldn't matter. I should be able to get a Mimimus. Oh, this is so nice. Now, actually, this is something completely new for me. I know it was been a while since we got these, but we got those like uh, maneuver node editor buttons. Um, I've always used an external mod for this kind of thing in the past, but I want to play with this. Do I, is it going to make me happy or am I going to get frustrated? I don't know. Let's push this out. So this has got to get out to where Mimmus is, which is at 46.4 thousand kilometers. Oh, that's the moon. Oh, I don't like that. We, we won't, no, nope, we'll pass that. Okay, now, isn't there a way to just go up? Do you just slide this down? Oh, no. That goes forward in orbit. That, you just click. Well, that's nice. Getting our encounter. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's go view this from Minmus's. Well, pretty good for now. Focus view. Minmus's thing here. Now, can I select that maneuver node again? Yes. I know I know this is all trivial for you, but this is all Okay, now this just is this just make the time go up, right? No, that clicks it up in orbit. This makes the time go forward, right? Yes. But I don't want to go forward just half a second. That's that's a little silly. 2 second increments, I guess. Okay. Oh, I'm going to need to give a little bit more. Ah, so that does affect. Okay, so I want to step that down. Well, that is so nice. So not quite. Coming a little bit below Mimis, so we'll have to do a tiny, tiny little correction. Because my inclination isn't perfect. So sue me. But it's going to be more than good enough. So we're coming up to that burn in about nine minutes. And we are off. Again, we're gonna have to stage partly through this. That's cool. Staging coming up. And nice. Now we are on, as per usual, the teeny tiny little ant engine. And then once we complete this burn, we'll talk a bit about the probe, and then we're gonna have to leave it for a little bit. I mean it's it's a week out to Minmus. Uh, I got other things going on, so uh probably won't be getting to the actual part of flying by Minmus. I'm going to have to guess maybe next episode, perhaps even the one after that. Yeah, welcome to the world of Kerbal Construction Time. Good, good, good. Awesome, okay, let's uh, put in our correction here. Always with these sort of correction burns, you want to be out far away. You know, sort of mid-course is the right thing, but far away from gravity because you're going to be definitely going out of the plane. So let's see here. If I go a little bit normally up, that definitely seems like the thing to want to do. So this turned into just a 5.4 meter per second burn, a tiny little burn. But the timing of it was, well, right now, it was right around the same time as when the seaplane was going to get ready. So I pushed it another hour and a half into the future so that I can do the seaplane mission first. The timing of this is nigh, by no means cr critical. And that way I can do the seaplane mission first and then come back and do this burn. So I set a Kerbal Alarm Clock alarm to remind me to come back out here and went back to the KSC and started doing some time warping. Unfortunately, the seaplane got finished at night and I don't want to fly at night, so I started time warping towards the morning. Time warp canceled because the might experiment collected more data. <gasps> I am over 92 science, 92 science, um, in this one maneuver node. Okay, uh, so anything's happening? <laughs> okay, I gotta do that first. 
Too many things happening all at the same time. I should have figured there was that possibility that um, I was going to need to warp to sunrise. We're going to watch this from Minmus. Oh, I just so love having patched conics and maneuver nodes and getting all of this pretty stuff. <laughs> I missed you. Okay, let's focus on Minmus. And, uh... We'll warp to the... No to be honest, this node... No, screw it. The timing... I don't have to do it right at this time. The timing of these types of maneuvers out here are just not at all critical so what we'll just do is simply just start the burn well i'm i'm actually more wanting to get the inclination well actually inclination doesn't really matter close that off that's a little tight, a little close. I don't want to. It looks like even if you look at it, it looks like I'm going to hit something. So uh, we'll. But I'll do that correction once we've entered into Mimis's sphere of influence. Um. I might. It looks like it's not going to kick me out enough. Based on this, it looks like it's going to just kick me out into this orbit. So we're going to have to probably do a burn. The best to get out to the sun. I was thinking Minmus might do the whole kick for me, but it's not. But that's okay. So, um, we will do a burn at Periapsis here to do the thing that will kick us out to the sun. Minmus just doesn't have the mass to give us what we need. That's okay. Alright. So, uh, let's set up an alarm. This is done. And we're interested in when we cross over Minmus's sphere of influence again. We'll give ourselves like five minutes warning. That's not going to be for... Go away. That's not going to be for another seven and a half days. So clearly that will have to be for a future episode. Because this one is drawing to a close. Got a lot lined up for next episode, including, of course, the seaplane, which is ready to go. So we'll be definitely starting off with that. But in the meantime, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.